Oh, I see, yeah. Very we, loudly. We can probably <laughs> hear him from the feature match area, you know. <laughs> Alright, he does indeed win the dice throw here and starts off with a Fenrir into so Theosis. Yeah, yeah, we see this line again um, where you use the Theosis before using Fenrir's effect. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a minor thing, like, as to whether you're expecting Gamma, or maybe you'd rather get the Fenrir search than the... Uh, sorry, you'd rather get the Unicorn search, so if you're gonna... If you, if you hit by Drawn Lockbird, you'd rather, like, secure the search that you really, really want, which in this case is the Birth rather than... A yeah, I think Birth is, like, when you establish that, it's such a like, an incredible card, especially in the grind game, you know? Just being able to uh, bring a monster back every turn, uh, and ex let you extend uh, oh, by yeah. uh, Normal Summoning without, you know, the Tribute. Uh, it's really, really powerful. In an awful lot of situations, it's like the one card that can help you extend. Because if you don't have any cash tier monster, you know, if your opponent like plays Book of Moon, for example, on your first cash tier monster, uh, then you've got a monster in place. You can't special summon any, um, and you don't have a cash tier monster face up for Theosis. So how else are you gonna get an extra cash tier monster on the field? And the answer is cash tier birth. It's a really uh, heavy engine hand that Darren's opened here. I think he's got quite a lot of uh, cash tier cards, which is pretty fine, right? Like, you're never really going to be mad about opening multiple cash dealers because it does let you uh, get as many of those, uh, you know, Diablosis banishes, the Shangri-La established, as mm. well as the, the follow-up and the Rise Heart tag. Uh, there's a lot of uh, just huge amount of stuff you put on the field with cash dealer, and when you're playing as a non-mirror match, just top raw engine, it's, you know, pound for pound, it's really hard to deal with. I agree. I think, like, it's kind of... One of the, I think people like uh, their plan A is to maybe not make a huge commitment with the cash tier engine. If you if you have like a couple of defensive cards, but if your whole hand is cash tier cards, you kind of need to go all in, make those big plays. And we do see actually that in Fletcher's deck there is the tools to punish it. If um, I mean Darren's kind of forced to do this line, I don't think anyone would say you know if you've drawn four cash tier cards that you should just go rise out pass. But there are three Nibiru's in, his, in Fletcher's deck, um, and you know. You are kind of forced to, like, there's no real way to play around Nibiru other than just stopping here, which obviously Darren doesn't want to do. So uh, Nibiru could come down from Fletcher and um, shake up the game quite a lot. Yeah, I think that's why Darren's uh, taken his time here to think about each little play because it is something to consider. You know, first of all, you got to consider that Droll, which he played around really well. And now it's a case of, okay, well, I mean, we're on summon number four here. How much further do we go? Because uh, Riseheart will be five. Yeah, he could pass now. <laughs> <laughs> An unorthodox strategy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you said, you know, it is kind of a case, well, once you've committed, you sort of just have to uh, deal with it, right? Yeah. So it's an interesting uh, take here for the first zone to lock out, uh, being a scale. And the reason for that is uh, it's extremely powerful against Wakaoshi, which uh, a lot of people are definitely aware of this format. It's super heavy, um, but the great reason why it works so well is that it doesn't let you um, activate the effect of Wakaoshi because it has to place into the other scale. So even locking one single scale is enough to totally shut down that engine. And the way that Fletcher's holding his hand here, I think he might have a bit of a surprise for him. Do you think this is, a, is this a Nibiru? Or do you think he's just kind of trying to mess with Darren? Because uh, I feel like once you're kind of hovering over a card, you're kind of pretending okay, it's Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the way he was holding that card there really made me question it, but I, all right. I, I can't think of what other cards you'd use, and he might just be trying to mess with Darren. That would be very funny. Because, I mean, it doesn't really matter, because there's no way Darren's going to pass in this situation, right? So I feel like um, Darren is uh, going to probably have to, the next decision past this point, and, wow, it was it drawn! Oh, Nibiru the Primal Being is uh, the special summon to tribute all monsters to your border controls and give them just nothing but a large token. Yeah, it's a very large token. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a consolation for sure. Especially locking out that zone there with the... Uh, or rather, uh, locking out your opponent's ability to special summon more cash dealers. It's uh, really important over the course of a whole duel, but uh, I think Birth has already been used, is that correct? The uh, I, extra normal or the special? I One of the effects has been used. I'm not sure the... Uh, I think he's used one effect. I can't remember which one. So I think he'll still be able to special summon from his graveyard. Right. Um, so Shangri-Ra has activated this turn. So if we can put one more cash monster up, it will still at least, you know, just be Rise Heart. Okay, yeah. So we still. Oh, we, he must use the special summon. Yes, yeah, so we still get to do a normal summon here, which is really strong. Yeah, it is, it is good to have an Arise Heart in play. The downside is that because it doesn't have any materials under it yet, it won't be able to use uh, its effect to banish a card from Fletcher. Uh, unfortunately, even though Nibiru's got 3,000, the Arise Heart is being boosted by the Field Spell. So it's not, you can't just go straight to Battle Phase and crash, but um, 
yeah, it's still a much weaker board than Darren would have liked to end up on, for sure. But here's the thing, despite the fact that the Nibiru has sort of uh, completely cut down that massive line that Darren was going for. Oh, oh triple talents. Well. Yeah, I was interested in this from Fletcher. Like, he was obviously pretty nervous and was like holding on to that Nibiru as to whether he could have waited a moment longer. Because you know the Castillo player is always going to end with an Arise Hard and play if they can, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe if you just wait until the Yeah, the it was Arise a bit preemptive, Heart wasn't it? Play, maybe yeah. he didn't want to lose his extra deck monster. That's why he did it on the Diabolosis Summon. Yeah, and, and a few cards. I, I mean, one thing that people have mentioned to me this weekend is that uh, Diablosis, like if it banishes a few of your pearly monsters from your main deck, that can actually be really annoying. So maybe he was like keen to get the Nibiru in play ahead of the Diablosis trigger and stop any of his monsters being banished uh, from his deck. Triple Talents is going to remove the Book of Moon in Fletcher's hand here, putting it back to the deck, leaving Fletcher with nothing but raw engine. And I suppose, you know, we kind of touched upon this. I think, you know, pound for pound, engine to engine, uh, especially once you've established Rise Heart, I think Cash Zero is, despite the huge Nibiru, in a not terrible position. Oh, for sure. And it's going to be very difficult for Fletcher to uh, prevent, you know, he, in order for the Arise Heart not to get any more materials, Fletcher would have to not use any cards that would go to the graveyard, which is pretty hard to do. So, um, but he might, he might be able to. Um, yeah, this is my friend Pearly, very useful here. It, it requires you to reveal three and then your opponent randomly selects one, but if you've only got the one... Uh, Oh, is that an Ash? That is an Ash Blossom. Oh, that's really annoying for Fletcher, because now, uh, I mean, not only is his my friend pulling negated, but it gets the Arise Heart up to that magical three materials, which gives it, uh, turns its Banish effect online. All right, this is a really important Pearly here. If we can uh, get just another engine piece off the top here, it might be uh, a decent way back into the game here. We had a Sleepy Memory and a Pearlily. Gonna take the Sleepy Memory. Sleepy memory <laughs> to the hands here. Some good tongue twisters in the pearly, pearly arsenal. So with Rise Heart now online, that's very, very huge. Um, do you think you use it on like the activation of a pearly to attach, or when do you think like the sort of best opportune time is to banish? Uh, it can be quite tricky because you don't know what they're going to summon when they activate the pearly effect. Uh, because you don't have to reveal, you don't reveal when you activate the effect, you just, um, you reveal it when you're resolving the effect. So Dan would have to sort of chain the Arise Heart immediately. Um, Fletcher will have access to a Zeus if he wants it. He is running the, uh, I don't want to say its name, the bird that the says little bird, no. Fucho? I love the art on it, Fucho, yeah. yeah. It's kind of just like a bird that's like, like looking away from you, like you can't touch me. Um, because it's unaffected by <laughs> your opponent's card effects. Um, so, yeah, you can make that, and that's the, like the, the easiest way in the world to, to make a Zeus, right? Because your opponent can't interrupt it, um, and then you just get to go straight into that Zeus in main phase two. But it would be like quite a heavy investment. And Fletcher's only got the one card left in his hand, well, depending on what this clearly hits. So, Hurley is going to mill off the top here. Hits oh. nothing. That's a whiff there. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was wondering if he was going to... For some reason, I thought he was going to get to pick one of those to add it, but you can't add a third <laughs> card off, Hurley. Uh, uh, Rise Heart's definitely getting larger here. And I noticed that Darren picked up his own banished card, and I assume that's probably because you don't want to be in a situation where if you take Pearlies and attach them, because once they're banished, once Pearlies are banished, there's no way to recur them. Yeah. So if you put them under a Rise Heart and Rise Heart leaves, you put them back in the graveyard, and that's potential like memory targets and all the all the rest of it for the course of the duel. Yeah, in general it's better to attach your own targets if you can, uh, and that's partly for the reason you mentioned, and it's also because you get effects of uh, cash tier cards when they're banished. So if you banish, for example, uh, a Theosis, then you can add a banished cash tier card from your, uh, to your hand. Yeah. Or if you banish a, um, a Big Bang, which Darren did, I think, then he'll be able to take one of the materials that's under a Rise Heart and either special summon it or add it to his hand, which is what he's doing now. Um, and it's going straight into play, and he gets to attach the Big Bang straight, straight away again. So why do you think he banished the attack position pearly and not maybe just wait for the XE? Um, so it might be that he's, he's scared of Fucho um, in particular, but I'm not... I, I can Doesn't say Rise Heart not. work against Fucho? No, it's unaffected by card effects. Oh, I thought it was just untargetable. I mean, Rise Heart also targets. Oh. <laughs> 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 that card is way worse than I thought it was. Why is everyone complaining about it? I think you're thinking of the uh, Mirror Jade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is Happiness. 
yeah, we're gonna upgrade into E. It's really powerful when your opponent has a lot of monsters in play that you really happiness. Um, because it it can uh, attach copies of Happy Memory from the deck. Um, and each time it attaches, a, well, after it attacks, it gets to um, search a purely card from your deck to your hand. And, um, and it also has the effect that when it, um, uh, or it has the same effect that all of the rank two purely monsters have, which is when you activate a purely spell, then you can attach it. So if you attack and then you search a copy of happiness, then you can attach the happiness and then the um, purely monsters get one extra attack for every happiness they have attached. So you can do attack that again four times and then in a search turn, again. Think, yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you do have to be aware. I don't know how big the token is. Obviously, you're taking a bit of damage every time you attack. Yeah. Uh, once you have a happiness attached, though, you can start to halve the attack of monsters that are being... Um, after you use the effect to search, you also get to halve the attack of a monster in play as well. So you might be able to eventually beat over some of the cash tier monsters or the token itself. This happiness is going to generate quite a lot of resources for Fletcher. The only thing I'm not 100% sure about is, is whether token you... stats, right? Oh yeah, no, I was just wondering whether you can actually attach. Um, I don't know if the, the purely quick play spell has to end up in the graveyard for it to be attached. I don't think anything in the wording of uh, purely happiness implies that the quick play spell has to end up in the graveyard. So I think it should be okay. But it's always something to keep in mind. Uh, sometimes some niche rulings like this can come up. It's going straight for delicious here rather than going through any happy memories. Um, it might be the case that some of the happy memories are banished. Uh, I mean, there's at least one happy memory, memory under it, so it gets at least two attacks. So I guess maybe you just buff it first and then attack and then start searching more happy memories. Darren's going to get a good lesson in how these purely cards work. He's going to be like, what does that do? So now it gets more attacks. Oh wait, now it gains attack. What is going on? Why are all of my monsters leaving the field? Uh, I think Rizehard's going to leave the field now as we've... Uh half the attack of that and attacked over. Yeah. yeah. It really looked like Fletcher was on the back foot, but just like resolving this one purely happiness is going to be, this is going to be such an impactful battle phase. Forgot to mention actually also that uh, at some point throughout this, the Unicorn triggered then banished the copy of Zeus yeah. from uh, Fletcher's extra deck. Let's he see how many copies two, playing. Yeah. he is playing too. I think it's very standard to have two Zeus. Yeah, um, it's, it's super, super important going second card for Pearly. So uh, even though like, I suppose like the, the whole logic is that it's better to hit a card that they only have access to one copy of rather than trying to hit Zeus over two turns. But because Zeus is so important, I think you just have to try and hit it over yeah. multiple turns. There's two copies of most of the important cards in Fletcher's extra deck, so I think it's like quite difficult. He's harming that Arise Heart a lot. I don't know how much damage is actually being inflicted to Darren here. If you keep harming the Arise Heart and attacking it again, you're going to do quite a lot of damage. Um, there are lines of OTKs that Pearlies can do with this uh, type of play, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough here. Is it? Oh, I think he's actually going this through top the top eight as Fletcher is uh, making a lead here with the Pearly deck. Darren has actually opted to go first regardless, and well, Pressure Planet Rafesoft is activated here. So Darren has a start. big hand of spells, as you can see. <laughs> you see what they are? I thought I saw a Big Bang and a Book of Moon. Yeah, there's uh, definitely a terraforming in there as well as a big bang. Terraform oh, a terraforming's not good if you've already got the field spell. Heads up from Darren, obviously, we were talking about John Lockbird before, so if you had the field spell and the terraforming, like normally you'd activate the terraforming first in case your opponent had Ash Blossom, but now that John Lockbird's so popular, you'd much rather just make sure you get your search through in case your opponent has John Lockbird. And we have a confirmation there from Fletcher that there is indeed no draw on Lockbird, so still going to uh, be able to do a decent amount of I guess, comboing here on Darren's part. And again, I guess it's just a question of, hey, uh, do we, uh, what do we do about that Nibiru? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you do. I don't know if you just kind of close your eyes and do your combo and hope <laughs> it's not there. Um, or whether you just go a bit more, I mean, once you've been punished quite hard by it in game one, maybe you just go for the relaxed um, approach of just a rise heart pass. But it's also like a sort of, um, it feels almost like a strange results oriented kind of bias that you can establish, right? Because you've just, you know, you have that recency of, hey, I've been uh, Nibiru, and then you start to play under unnecessarily conservatively mm. when realistically you should just kind of go in. For sure. Well, you have to make a decision. It's, it's really tricky to make these decisions in a game because you can't really tell. It's just your opponent's opening hand whether they have Nibiru or not. I mean, he's used an impermanence here. It doesn't mean he doesn't have Nibiru. I mean, yeah, 
it's 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 always hard to tell. Um, so that unicorn just got infinite impermanence, and I'm just wondering. Um, Darren has a Book of Moon there. Do you think there's a world where you Book of Moon your own unicorn to guarantee the theosis? Well, the downside of Book of Mooning the unicorn is that now it's a level you can't use it as a material. So you get the theosis, but like, what are you getting off that theosis? Another level seven. So you might as well. It really does <laughs> the same as well thing. Just keep the level seven. Yeah, it's always something to think about. Uh, we saw players side in Book of Moon to do with skill drain as well. Or actually, when I spoke to Connor, when he said he sided in Book of Moon specifically to do with magic cylinder. Uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, that was a matchup. That was a matchup. All right. Well, the uh, terraforming will add another pressure planet here, so that's going to be fine for next turn to reestablish and get another search. But on this turn, however, it's uh, it's looking quite rough here as we don't have too many more crazy plays. Like, do you just leave Fenrir and Unicorn up? I think there's definitely a merit to doing that. Um, you could uh, instead make maybe a Diablosis and then look at your opponent's extra deck once uh, and then use the birth to revive the material you detach, so maybe the Unicorn or the Fenrir. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like Darren's going to do that, he'd rather have the uh, Unicorn and Fenrir. But yeah, I was going to suggest, like, for example, you could like banish a Zeus from your opponent's extra deck and then have the Unicorn ready to banish another card from your opponent's extra deck when they use a monster effect. Book of Moon immediately being you Double Book of Moon! <laughs> Book of Eclipse with extra steps. <laughs> this, is, this is a, uh, you know, Book of Eclipse with a minus two deficit Honestly, there. at the end of the day, you'd, you'd rather, if your opponent's got these Book of Moons, that you didn't make a Rise Heart, because then you've kind of consolidated three monsters into one, whereas in this case, Fletch has used two Book of... I mean, he's used two Book of Moons and an Infinite Impermanence to deal with Darren's sort of opening gambit, if you like. Um, so... 15 plus years and Book of Moon still being a meta threat that it is and uh, I guess so many people have said multiple times the best minus one in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> ah, that was definitely foolish burial. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, delicious added off of the uh, targeting, here. you know, Darren just checking there that you can target a face down monster which I, I assume Fletcher knows what he's doing by this point that you can. <laughs> All right, sleepy memory in rotation as well for a pearly here, and it's not looking ideal. I'm interested why you start with the pearly. It might mean that he's got a lily or another quick play spell. I think you've got to have lily in your hand at this point, so I don't know why you'd go straight for the pearly. Because lily is like a guaranteed search, whereas pearly could miss. Um, so you always want to play a lily if you can, um, every turn. So here we see the miss, because it has to add a spell and trap. Can't add that pearly lily. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure where Fletch is going to go with this. He's only got one card left. We saw Darren's got that Book of Moon as you were talking about earlier. So if the one card in hand is a spell and you use the purely effect, then you just chain Book of Moon and you don't get to make an XYZ. Um, and then there's no way you can summon any more purely monsters with just one spell because you don't have the discard. And if the one card in hand is a purely Lily, then you can't use the purely, so you'll just book the purely Lily. So this has got to be a spell in his hand because I'm guessing Fletch will activate the effect of purely. And Darren responded to it, and this this looks like the cleanest. I think you've uh, predicted this quite well here. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly how it's gone down, and the Book of Moon actually being uh, clutch here. The third one is the charm, I suppose, for this duel. Yeah, this was uh, three books between the players here. Um, yeah, this is really interesting. I mean, Darren was not looking happy when those wow. two Book of Moons came. Wow, it's so down. intense when you have uh, a game three like this, so deep into. Uh, I guess it's not that deep yet, but I mean, it's still pretty. Uh, Pretty intense here, you're in top 16. It's always nice to see those back and forth games. It's a bit of a awkward hand here by Fletcher. I think that's one too many defensive cards you'd want for going first here. Mm. I think he's having a good think because, I mean, he obviously he knows what he wants to do with the Sleepy Memory, but he has to pick what card that he least likes in his hand. So we see a lot of different cards to discard, being, you know, that Ash, that Nibiru. Yeah, Primal Being is a really good card into Kashtura, specifically going second, because, I mean, if you're going second, you are going to have to, you know, uh, special summon a lot to try and crack your opponent's field and so uh, as a last ditch effort you know that's going to be really strong in it's Fletcher's not, hands. It's not bad going first because a lot of people mention this that if you're if you're going first with Kashtira then maybe you can get away with you know, just making the rise heart and passing and that's exactly four summons but you can't really do four summons when you're going second right? Yeah, exactly. Let's say your opponent interrupts one of them now all of a sudden if you want to even make an Arise Heart you need at least five summons so <laughs> Nibiru is pretty reasonable to keep in going first for sure. 
Fletcher just deciding what he wants. It looks like he's going to go for three copies of Delicious. Yeah, this is generally how you uh, start your first turn with Pearly here. You really want that. Uh, you really want that uh, Delicious to get Plump rolling. Yeah, Plump is. Oh, Droll and Lockbird, okay. So, for anyone wondering why Darren's used uh, Droll and Lockbird on the second search, it's probably because Fletcher used his Sleepy Memory in the draw phase rather than, uh, well, the main phase. So, Droll and Lockbird says if your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, except during the draw phase. So it's always good if you can use something in the draw phase to use it in the draw phase. Yep, exactly. Uh, I suppose one of the few disadvantages of uh, such a powerful hand trap as Droll and Lockbird here as the uh, Nibiru will finally be discarded, and that's going to be... Oof, I don't know. It's, do you think be you have a, a reaction when you see Nibiru being discarded? Do you think that means they don't have Nibiru, or do you think that means they have another Nibiru? Because why would they do <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, you're identifying that they definitely play that card as you did in game one, and then they discard it again here. I don't know. Uh, it's rough. I think uh, going second for Darren, I assume you're probably in a situation where you just kind of have to go in regardless of how much uh, you fear that Nibiru, right? For sure. So that Pearl Lily was... Uh, oh, and the vanity theme. <laughs> Darren just kind of nodding to himself there. And we can hear him laughing all the way over here. <laughs> yep, that is a So this looks fiend. like a kind of birth or bust situation, I he's would say. He's got a book in his hand. Or a book, yeah, I suppose. Got a book. Okay, that's also pretty, pretty solid. Does it have... It can draw a card, I suppose you might as well. Fletcher's last card is Ash Blossom, so this really hasn't been a super opening. It just depends if you've got a way to deal with the Vanity's theme, which, as you said, Book of Moon works perfectly well. Yeah, but I'm struggling to see a lot of engine in Darren's hand here. I'm hoping that's not just all, you know, um, defensive cards. Maybe, yeah, it's either we're struggling to see it. Oh. <laughs> on top of Book of Moon, okay. So maybe he's doing this in the draw phase to get ahead of that effect that lets you draw a card. Yeah, that makes sense there. Oh, wow. All right, and there's this unicorn. There's oh, unicorn. that's incredible. All right, but we do know that Fletcher is going to uh, hit this with an Ash Blossom. But the question is, does Darren have another card to be able to play through that? Looks oh, like okay. he's let the search go. All right, okay. Why maybe do you think... He's, maybe he's just saving it for Theosis. Yeah, um, that's true. But, like, the thing is I've noticed is uh, sometimes people hold for Theosis and then they can just get punished by birth, right? So, yeah, so in this case, Darren searched birth. But, like, it's better this way around for Fletcher, right? Because now, if, uh, if he'd ashed the Unicorn, then the Theosis would have... Um, oh, this is terrible, though. Um, yeah, so if you've already got Theosis in hand and then you Ash Unicorn and your opponent activates Theosis, then you feel like a bit of a Muppet, right? <laughs> um, so, so, whereas if you hold it and they, if they don't... So in this situation, if Darren had had, rather than the extra Fenrir in hand, he'd had Theosis, then he, he would have searched Birth and then Ash would have come down on the Theosis and then maybe Darren wouldn't have had any follow-up. But in this case, Darren's had an awful lot of follow-up, which is going to be very distressing for Fletcher. Um, yeah, no, this is a perfect combination of outs here for Darren. The double book, the exact engine requirements to play through exactly Ash Blossom. I think uh, that's quite a commanding position as Fletcher is on... Does he have a card in hand? No, this is nothing. Yeah. He's going to start losing his extra deck as well. He's going to lose his graveyard to birth if he uses a spell card. Like, Ashira yeah, just banishes all of your opponent's cards face down. It has no mercy. Um, face down recursion of banished cards is like... Almost impossible to get back in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? There's very few cards that well, let you do uh, there that. There is a Rise Heart, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Rise Heart, yeah. And which, one, even, which even then, you can't exactly, you know, when you reattach if there's multiple Banish cards, you can't, like, pick the one, right? Because it's, like, random, or... I know, I you can pick if it's your own one. I suppose because, like, you can count it in the order that it's banished, right? Mm. Like, that, that is technically, like... Well, allowed. yeah, you can pick, it, yeah, your own cards you, sure. you, you're allowed to look at and choose. One thing that was quite fun, you, you reminded me of a very long time ago, is if you use Pot of Desires, and then you had a had a side frame Lord Omega. Mm -hmm. It lets you return a card that's banished, so you can do that as well. Yeah. Um, you'd use that to return your snow, just for a lot of <laughs> memories. Um, but yeah, this is looking like Darren, Darren is firmly in, in control of this game. Can't really imagine what could uh, come off the top of Fletcher's deck here to get him out of the situation, if Darren even gives him another turn. Is there anything that you can do with, uh, you know, the... Um the sort of the, the, the banishing from the extra that's actually relevant here. I mean, you, you will just be taken apart. Like, Zeus's, I think, is the most important thing. Uh, well, at this point, you could go after the smaller engine pieces. Yeah. If you wanted to as well. So you could, for example, take away that happiness, which was the one-card kind of comeback. 
Oh, he's actually going to Big Eye. Well, Big Eye can make a very large Zeus using the opponent's plump, which is pretty oh. brutal. Um, I thought he was going to Big Eye the Vanities Fiend, but you can't flip it up this turn. You can flip it up, yeah. No, because it was... Oh, true. It was only Book yeah, of yeah. Do you think that was like maybe a play? <laughs> That would have been very funny as well. Yeah, just I mean, lock I your opponent under their own vanity fiend. Why do you think like a vanity fiend or a, or like a 25 material Zeus or however many it's got? You can also um, use Plump to attach two more cards. I don't think Darren's that next level though. I'm going to have to call him out on that in the interview. Be like, you could have oh, had could've, a bigger you, Zeus, Darren. You could have had more Zeus. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's really funny. That's a game over. Look at Darren.